Tale of Two Cities. As we continue with our Tale of Two Cities, one of the most stark contrasts between the two Niagara Falls is their dealings with developers. Said we want to build, we want to, you know, develop our property. Here is the mayor of Niagara Falls, Ontario, describing his city's relationship with developers. We have a business development department at City Hall that works closely with the developers. Uh, I think as a council, we work closely with them. Yeah, the West Mall development. And uh, here is the mayor of Niagara Falls, New York, describing his city's relationship with developers. It's been a rocky road in terms of uh, our relations with those large developers. That's a bit of an understatement by the new mayor, Paul Deister. Niagara Falls problems are not limited only to the past failings of its leaders. There is also what can be called the great developer dilemma. In Niagara Falls, the names Cordish and Milstein have become four-letter words. All over the city, you see these signs for Niagara Falls redevelopment. NFR is owned by the mega New York City real estate developer, Howard Milstein. Back in the 1990s, Milstein bought up dozens of parcels of land in the falls. He owns 140 acres of property in the city, much of it downtown, including the turtle, which sits right across the street from the state park. Today, virtually everything Milstein owns remains as vacant as the day he bought it. Two on your side contacted New York City developer Milstein about why his properties have sat vacant for so long. A spokesman for the company, George Arch, told us, Mr. Milstein has asked one of his senior advisors to go on a fact-finding trip to Niagara Falls to do an analysis of the situation there and meet with local officials. Also vacant is the Rainbow Center Mall. It's been closed now for eight years. Its lease is controlled by the Cordish Company, a huge national mall operator based in Baltimore. Now, although Cordish pays taxes on the mall, it has made no moves to do anything with the property. An empty property that takes up two blocks of prime city real estate close to the falls. It should be a series of shops for this two block area instead of a, a monstrosity of an empty uh, center, an empty mall that forces tourists to walk around it. How much of a problem has it been with the developers in the city? Well, I think they're not developers as much as they're land speculators. Would you say these developers are holding the city hostage? Investing in a property, sitting on it as a speculator, and, you know, hoping somehow to profit uh, from uh, holding down the development of downtown Niagara Falls, it's not, that's not square dealing. Privately, those in the development community say they've had trouble dealing with City Hall over the years and have had serious questions about the city's past leadership. Deister, the new mayor, is trying to put the past in the past. This isn't about past grudges, not with Mr. Milstein, not with Mr. Cordish. When they're ready to move, we're ready to move here in Niagara Falls. As part of his efforts to get things moving, Deister has given the owner of the Cordish company a private tour of the downtown area, including the casino. The Cordish company declined an interview request with two on your side, but in response to emailed questions, blames its problems with the mall on the collapse of the Canadian dollar seven years ago, which it says cost it 60% of its business at the mall. It also claims there have been violations of its lease by the city, including unrepaired holes in the roof and problems with safety and security. In response to questions from Two On Your Side about its plans for the mall, a Cordish spokesman, Zed Smith, emailed us saying, in the last year, the fortunes of the Canadian dollar have reversed and the Seneca Casino has prospered and grown. This has given the Rainbow Center its first chance in years, and we have an excellent game plan we are working on with the state to turn Rainbow Center into a major entertainment attraction for all of Western New York. We sincerely hope that the Deister administration will be a partner with us and the state in this endeavor. Now, a spokesman for the state's development arm in the falls tells us that Cordish representatives have met with them a few times in the past few months, but so far, Cordish's plans are very preliminary. And so now, after years of inaction and inertia, two of the major impediments to downtown development could give way to a word that hasn't been heard much in Niagara Falls recently, optimism. This is a Two on Your Side special, Niagara Falls, a tale of two cities.
Everyone has an opinion of what's wrong with Niagara Falls and how to improve the city they love. And you can share those opinions right now while you're watching A Tale of Two Cities. Log on to NiagaraFallsVoice.com. You can leave your comments right now. Plus, right after the show, we'll have a live chat with Niagara Falls city leaders where you can ask questions. It's your chance to talk to the people who will shape the future of Niagara Falls. Log on to NiagaraFallsVoice.com now and have your voice heard. Pat 